Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to import a Google Sheets document onto your website and have it be able to update automatically. So this means anytime you make an update to your Google Sheets document, it's gonna update automatically on your website. Now, this is something I've been wanting to do for a while and I found a really good way to do it. And the best part is it's 100% free. This is gonna require two simple plugins to pull this off. The first one is TablePress. So if you just go to tablepress.org and you can click right here, it says download from the plugin directory. And as you can see, this is a really big plugin that a lot of people are using, 800,000 active uh, installations. Uh, this is a really lightweight plugin, so it's not gonna slow down your website or anything like that. So that's how you import your table. Then you need to download this uh, plugin by the same developer called Automatic Periodic Table Import. Um, so this is basically just a really simple way to grab your Google Sheets document URL and then input it into this plugin. I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to pull this off. And as an added bonus at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you how to make your tables responsive using TablePress. So before we jump into the back end of the website, let me show you how this is gonna look on the front end. So as you can see right here, this is a simple table with three different rows. And this is actually pulling in from my Google Sheets document and updating automatically every 15 minutes. So this is what it looks like on the website. And if I jump over into the Google Sheets, this is the document you can see right here. I just called it uh, Best Restaurants in Philadelphia and I just have three uh, simple uh, restaurants right here with a link. So as you can see, it's a very simple example. And now let's just jump into the back end and let's get started. Now that you've installed TablePress and the automatic periodic table import plugin, we're ready to get started. The first step is to export your Google Sheets document into a CSV file. Then we're gonna import that into TablePress. So to do that, you go to your Google Sheets document, go up to File, Download, and then you just click this button right here where it says comma separated values or CSV. You just click that button right there. And as you can see, it has downloaded this to your local machine. Now we're gonna import that file into TablePress. Next, you jump over into WordPress. Under TablePress, if you go up here and click Import, you can just click and drag this file right up here where it says Choose File. Or you can select this button, Choose File, and then find it on your local machine and import it there. Next, you just wanna make sure that it's set to CSV. So that's good. Um, Click this right here where it says add as new table, and that's it. Just click import. So as you can see, the table has been imported successfully. So if you jump over into all tables, you can see right here, this is the table I just imported. So if I click that, you're gonna wanna go in here and remove you know, any additional characters or anything like that it may have added. So let me just type this in, and let me just type in like Google Sheets, just so I kinda know. So up here, you can change your table ID if you like. Um, I already did one example before, so that was number one. So this is my second one, you can call it two. Whatever you wanna call it, it doesn't really matter. This is all just gonna be for the back end. And as you can see right here, it imported everything correctly. So let me stretch these columns out a little bit more so you can see. So you can see it matches up. It's got four rows. It's got the name, location, description, link. So everything is done. And as you can see, this is a really good interface. And if you need to actually add more columns or anything along those lines, you can do it. But if you're gonna sync this up and have it automatically update, it's best to just do it on the Google Sheets level and not here because it's it might not uh, sync up correctly. So if you need to make any future updates, I do recommend just doing it in Google Sheets and you'll be good to go. And if you jump down here, there's some settings in here if you like to change it. Um, I like to just kind of keep everything by default and just see how it looks. But I do like this one, the alternating row colors. So that way it breaks it up a little bit. So if you jump back over to here, you can see this is like a light gray color. So it's good to kind of have the separation. So it's easier for the user to read. And let's just hit save changes. And now the next step is I'm gonna show you how to grab that short code and add it to your website. Now that we've imported the Google Sheets, we can grab this short code right here. So if you just go to your um, table press right here under short code, you just need to grab that and just add it to your website. So we use Elementor to build all of our websites. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in Elementor. 
But the great thing about this is you can use this on pretty much anything. You can use it in Gutenberg, any other page builders. Since it's short code driven, it's very easy to use. So just copy that. And like I said, we're using Elementor and I already have this page set up. So let me go into here and just add that short code. Hit apply. And now I'm gonna update the page. Hit refresh here and that's it. It's as simple as that. So once you have your short code, you can add it pretty much anywhere on your website. The next step is to grab the Google Sheets dynamic link and then add it into the table press settings to have it sync automatically. So let me show you exactly how to do that. This is a very uh, critical step, so you gotta make sure that this is done correctly or the syncing's not gonna work. So if you jump back over into your Google Sheets document, if you go up here to File, Publish to Web, and you see right here, you wanna make sure it says Link, Entire Document, and if you scroll down here where it says web page, you're gonna to wanna to go down here and select the CSV. So what this does is this is now a dynamic URL right here, linking straight to your CSV file for your Google Sheets. Then you just wanna go down here and make sure that this button is active, automatically republish when changes are made. Just make sure that's active. Like I said, copy that. You can close that out. Now that you grab that, what you need to do is jump over into import. So if you don't see this down here called auto import tables, that means you don't have the other plugin installed. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you install that and activate it. So what that's gonna do is show you all of your tables. And this is where you're gonna import that URL you just uh, copied from Google Sheets. So you're gonna to wanna to go down here, click active and keep it at CSV. Keep it at URL right here, the source type. And now you just paste in that URL. And as you can see at the end of the URL, the output says CSV, so everything is good there. You just click right here, save auto import. And that's it. So now technically your Google Sheets short code that you added right here is now synced to your Google Sheets. If you look under here where it says last auto import, what this is gonna do is up here where it says auto update, we have it by default every 15 minutes. So every 15 minutes, this script is going to go out to your Google Sheets URL and see if there's any changes and then automatically update it in your tables. So if you don't wanna do 15 minutes, they have some other options. You can do hourly, twice daily, or once daily. So in this example, I just wanna show 15 minutes. Now the next step is to Go into your Google Sheets document here. Let's make a, a new column or row and let's see if it syncs up automatically, you know, the way it should. So let's just go in here and let's just add, you know, test, test location. I'm just going to add test, you know, just this is just an example. And I'll add the time. So as of right now, it's um, 914, just so we have an idea. So the link I just put is 914. This is just an example. So now if you go here, hit refresh, you're gonna see it successfully uh, imported it when we hit save. So if we go back to the page here, hit refresh, nothing's gonna happen. So it's not gonna show the new one yet. So now let's wait 15 minutes and come back to this page and see if the front end of the website has that new test row. Now it's been 15 minutes and you can see right here, it was originally at 9.13, we're at 9.29 right now. Um, to do that, I just refresh the page and you can see when the last time it successfully imported it. So now let's jump over to the front end of the website and see if that new test row was added automatically. So just go up here, hit refresh, and there you go. You can see that it has now uh, did an import on the latest row that we added. So if we jump back over into here, all tables, and you click on your table press uh, thing right here, you could see it added the new uh, row right here called test. So that's it. Uh, I told you this was a pretty cool feature and the best part is it's 100% it's free to do this. Um, other plugins, uh, they charge for this functionality. So if you really do find this valuable, um, the developer here at TablePress, you can donate money. Um, that's how he's able to you know, go ahead and develop these things. Because if you go under extensions, you could see some of these plugins, they would like you to um, you know, go ahead and donate some money. 
So the next step is I'm going to show you how to do the responsive tables here and, you know, consider making a donation. So if this really is a plugin that you're going to use for your business and it is making you money, you might as well help a developer out because this is how they're able to offer you this plugin and support. So as an added bonus, I will show you how to make this table responsive because if you start to scale down this website, if you have a, any table that's wider than the width of your container here for like mobile, for example, you're going to see it's going to make the user uh, scroll horizontally. So the best case scenario would be like you want to stack these uh, rows and columns on top of each other to make it a better user experience. So out of the gate, the plugin doesn't do a responsive mode automatically. And like I just showed you here, they do have a responsive tables uh, plugin. So you would just click this, download it, activate it. And now I'm going to show you how to enable it to make it responsive. To make it responsive, all you need to do is go down to this section down here and grab the short code that they supply you and just change out the ID number. It's pretty simple. So let me show you, let's say you want to have it where it stacks on phone. So let me copy this code right here. And the good thing about this page is uh, if I scroll back up to here, these are the different responsive modes. So they have a flip, scroll, collapse, stack. So you could read a little bit more about it right here. So what I would like to do is have it stack like this on phone. So if you go down here, like I said, you copy that. And if you look right here under phone, it stacks at 768 pixels. So that's pretty standard for phone. So like I said, copy that and go back into your page with your original short code and get rid of that, paste in the new one. And where it says your ID, that is your table ID. So in this case, uh, from earlier in the tutorial, it was just number two. So if I hit update there, go back into the sheet, hit refresh. And now when I get to 768 pixels, it's gonna automatically stack on top of each other to give it a better user experience. So you can see right here, it has now stacked each other column on top of each other. So it's a really useful feature if you need to have some more responsive controls over your tables. So that's it for this video tutorial. I hope this was helpful. And let me know if you're able to use this on your website. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new videos like this. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design.